Thanks for tuning in. The wiring harness that came with our Erod LS3 crate engine had some issues. Some of them required modifications inside the fuse relay box, but this video is about altering the wiring outside the fuse box. It is a little scary cutting into a brand new wiring harness, but at some point you realize that it's just wires held together by electrical tape in plastic tubes held together by electrical tape. You can open it up and make a few changes, and by the time you're done, nobody can tell that it's not factory wiring. Just be sure to use quality electrical tape. Three things before we jump into the changes. One, what we did goes directly against the advice of my Chevy dealer. Now you've been warned. Two, disconnect your battery before doing any wiring work. It's worth the extra minute. Three, I'm not going to talk about soldering technique because I've covered it in another video. I'll put a link to it in the description. Now, let's get started. The wires leading to our mass airflow sensor were over 18 inches too long. So Dylan cut out 18 inches and started soldering the wires back together. Then we had a bad moment where we realized that two of the wires were the exact same tan color. You can avoid this problem by temporarily wrapping a piece of tape around one of the two wires at both exposed ends. But just for the record, we learned that the mass airflow connector pin D connects to black engine control module connector pin 42 and mass airflow connector pin E connects to black ECM connector pin 62. To check those connections you need to understand how the ECM's connector pins are numbered so here's Dylan explaining it. This is the middle connector on the engine repeater. It's the connector that goes here. This connector is known as Item C2, it's the black connector. Okay, so we believe that this is pin number 72, and that this, that would make this pin down here, pin one. Yep. And it counts along these rows, so. That's all the one small through ones. 16, 17 through 32. 33 through 52. 52. And then 53 through 72. Yep, and which, then this is number 73. And by the way, pin 53 is labeled on this connector. Yes, it's labeled in the top left corner to you, video camera, right here. Another way too long wire in the harness was the alternator control. GM schematics call this the generator turn on signal. Here is Dylan shortening this wire. It looks a lot better after shortening. The wires from the ECM to each of the four oxygen sensors in the exhaust were way too long, so we shortened them. This schematic page shows the oxygen sensor wiring. The wires running from the ECM to each sensor are the ones we shorten. Notice that each wire has a four digit number. You can use that number to find the circuit in the LS's official instructions. For example, wire 3113 can be found in the instructions here. But if we choose another example from the schematic, say wire 3212, and look for it in the instructions, guess what? It's not there. Or more precisely, it's not in the English instructions, but it is listed in the French and Spanish instructions. All connections to this oxygen sensor and this one are left out of the English instructions. Dude, before we move on, please take note. Leave the oxygen sensor's wiring, the wiring between the sensor and its connector, alone. At least one of the wires between the sensor and its connector is a different metal that is basically impossible to solder, something we learn the hard way. Also, if you ever replace the sensor, you don't want to have to modify the new sensor before you can use it. The camshaft position sensor sits at the front of the engine on Gen 4 LS engines like this one. Out of the box, the E-Rod wiring harness came with the wrong connector for the cam position sensor, so they included an adapter cable that they call a jumper harness. The instructions say, and I quote, 6.2 liter LS3 require the cam position sensor jumper harness is required to connect the main harness to the MAP sensor. What? Anyway, it was very easy to see which wire connected to which through the unwanted middleman connector, 
so we cut it out and soldered those connections directly. This is the final product. The Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor, or MAP Sensor for short, sits at the front of the intake manifold. It is the electronic equivalent of a vacuum or boost gauge. Out of the box, the LS3's wiring harness came with the wrong connector for the MAP Sensor, so they included an adapter cable that they call a jumper harness. If you just connect and cruise, this is what your engine will look like, minus the battery cables, of course. We weren't okay with that, so we cut out the middleman connector and soldered the connections directly. The last change I want to mention is sneaking a compressor control wire into the harness so the engine has a really clean factory look. In a vintage air system, there is a switch that will only allow the compressor to turn on if the system is properly charged, and it's called the trinary safety switch. The compressor enable wire runs from the trinary safety switch to the compressor. We used black wire for this connection because the wire coming off the compressor is black. In this time lapse, you can see Dylan adding the black wire to the harness from the compressor to the firewall, then adding it to the bundle of wires that runs from the harness fuse box to the front of the car where the trinary safety switch lives. This is what the final connection to the compressor looks like. As you can see, we made the wiring on Dylan's LS3 as clean as we could. Did we break anything by making these changes? No, we didn't, and we would definitely make them again. Comments and questions are always welcome, and they help other viewers. Thank you for watching.